Now that we understand what embeddings are and how they can help us find content by meaning, let's learn how to generate them with OpenAI's embedding models using the AI SDK. We learn two key functions today, the embed function for embedding a single value and embed many for processing multiple values at once. Let's jump into VS Code and start building. First, let's create our API endpoint in the app folder. In the API folder, create a new folder called embeddings. Inside, create route.ts file. We'll start with our basic post handler structure. Export, async, function post. And now let's import what we need from the AI SDK. We import the embed function from the AI package and the OpenAI provider. So import OpenAI from AI SDK slash OpenAI. The embed function is what turns text into vectors. Let's start simple. We will hard code some text just to see how this works. So await embed. We pass in an object where we specify model as openai.text embedding model. And we pass in text embedding three small. This is their efficient embedding model that produces 1536 dimensional vectors. We also specify value and this is the text we want to convert to a vector. Let's type in a movie about hackers discovering reality in a simulation. The embed function returns an object from which we can destructure the embedding. We can return this embedding in the response. So return response.json, an object with the embedding. Our route handler is ready. Let's test this with the Thunder Client VS Code extension. Click on New Request. This is going to be a POST request to HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash embeddings. With your dev server running, click Send. You can see our request succeeds with status 200 OK, and we get back an array of 1536 numbers. These are our embeddings the numerical representations of our text. Each number captures some aspect of the meaning, though we can't tell exactly what each one represents. But returning just this embedding isn't very useful. Let's see what else the embed function gives us. Instead of destructuring immediately, let's return the entire result object to see what we get. So const result is equal to await embed and response.json result. Test again with Thunder Client. And you can see we get more than just the embedding. We have a value property showing our original text, the embedding array, and a usage object that tells us how many tokens this operation consumed. This is important for tracking costs. We also have some additional information about the response. Now let's make our route handler dynamic so users can send their own text. We specify request of type request, we destructure text from request.json. From the result, we will destructure value, embedding, as well as usage. The model remains the same, but the value is now text from the request, and we return response.json, an object with the value, the embedding, usage, and then dimensions. This is going to be embedding.length. Save the file and test this in Thunder Client. We will add a JSON body. So curly braces, double quotes, text. is going to be a story about space exploration and first contact with aliens. Click send and we get back a response. We get our original text, embedding, usage info, and dimension count. Now you might be wondering, why aren't we building a UI for this like we did for our chat and completion features? Well, embeddings are different. They're more of a behind the scenes operation. You generate embeddings when you're processing your data, like when Netflix adds a new movie to their catalog. It's not something users interact with directly. They interact with the search or recommendations that use these embeddings, but not the embedding generation itself. So for learning and testing, Thunder Client is actually perfect. Now what if you need to embed multiple pieces of text? 
Maybe you have 100 movie descriptions to process. You don't want to call the API 100 times separately. That would be slow and inefficient. So let's update our route handler to support batch processing. We will import the embed mini function from the AI package. Now let's add a new condition to handle arrays of text. So from request.json, we don't destructure, but instead we get the body of the request. And then we add a condition if array.isArray body.texts, which we will pass in a request. If this exists, we will copy our embed function code and make the changes. The function is now called embed mini. The model remains the same, but value is now called values. And to this, we assign body.texts, which is an array. And embed mini returns values and embeddings, both plural. Once we embed multiple values, we can return response.json values, embeddings, usage, count, which is embeddings.length, and then dimensions, which is embeddings of zero dot length. We will have multiple embeddings and dimensions are per embedding. So we access the first element in the array and calculate the length. The code for a single embedding, this is going to be body.text. So basically, if we receive a texts array in the request, we use embed many. If we don't, we will pass in text and we use the embed function to embed a single value. Let's test this with Thunder Client. Send a post request with an updated JSON body. We have curly braces. The property is texts plural, which is an array of three movies, a movie about time travel, a documentary about ocean life, a comedy about mistaken identity. Click send, and you can see our request succeeds. We get back three embeddings, one for each text. The usage object shows the total tokens for all three. The count indicates the number of embeddings, and dimensions is the dimensions for each embedding. And it's important to note that the embeddings come back in the exact same order as the texts you send. So the first embedding corresponds to the time travel movie, second to the ocean documentary, and third to the comedy. This ordering is very important when you're processing your database. Speaking of processing, when you're processing lots of texts, Embed Mini has a useful option called Max Parallel Calls. By default, it processes texts one by one but we can speed things up by processing multiple texts at the same time. You can set it to five, for example. This tells the SDK to process up to five embeddings at the same time. It's like having five workers instead of one. This makes batch processing much faster, but be careful, too many parallel calls might hit API rate limits. Of course, you won't see a difference with just three texts in an array, but imagine processing thousands, the time savings add up. And another point to mention is that we are using text embedding three small, which gives us 1,536 dimensions. OpenAI also offers text embedding three large with 3,072 dimensions, double the size. More dimensions mean the model can capture more nuanced meanings. It's like the difference between describing a movie with 10 words versus 20 words. More words let you be more precise, but there is a trade-off. More dimensions mean higher costs, more storage and slower processing. For most applications, especially for learning purposes, the small model with 1536 dimensions works great. All right, to quickly recap what we've built, we learned how to use the embed function to convert a single piece of text into a vector of numbers. We saw how to track token usage for cost monitoring. Then we explored embed many for batch processing multiple texts at once. We saw how the order is preserved, which is super important when you're processing your database. We also learned about max parallel calls to speed up batch processing and briefly looked at the difference between small and large embedding models. These embeddings are the foundation of semantic search. In our next lesson, we will learn how to actually use these vectors. 
how to calculate similarity between them to find related content.